Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, UAS America Fund files petition with the FAA for rulemaking on micro drones. The EAA says you can win the perfect cub, and a New York City councilman wants to ban nearly all UAV flights. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, as you can tell, we're already getting into the Christmas spirit here at Aero TV. But before we get started with our holiday, we have to deliver you the news. The UAS America Fund LLC has filed a formal petition for rulemaking with the FAA, proposing a new micro unmanned aircraft rule. The proposed regulation would govern all government operations for unmanned aircraft systems that weigh three pounds or less are operated below 400 feet, stay at least five miles from airports, and pilots must have a demonstrated level of aeronautical knowledge. The petition includes a complete self-contained set of UAS regulations for commercial and other non-recreational micro UAS uses, and it's supported by a safety study based on the FAA's own data. Matthew Bishk, president of the UAS Fund, said in part, quote, This is only the first step in the UAS Fund's plans to develop and propose technical and regulatory standards across all segments of the UAS market, end quote. Bishk said they plan to propose regulations for heavier UASs in the future. The UAS Fund claims the micro-category framed by their petition immediately embraces beneficial applications such as aerial photography, real estate, infrastructure inspection, news gathering, agriculture, search and rescue, firefighting, training, certification, and many others. The EAA has announced that the 2015 EAA Aircraft Sweepstakes Grand Prize is a Piper J3 Cub, meticulously restored by Ellis Clark of Solvang, California. The lucky winning entry will be selected on September 30th, 2015. Looking for an airplane worthy of being the grand prize for the EAA sweepstakes was not an easy task for John Hopkins, EAA's manager of aircraft maintenance. However, the answering of an ad on eBay for a cub in Michigan, John had a pretty good feeling he'd found the one. Hopkins said, quote, when I called the owner and began talking with him, I knew this would be the one. He was very particular, and after I laid my eyes on it, I couldn't blame him. The cub is perfect. It was everything I was hoping it would be, and then some, end quote. Anyone may enter the raffle. Cash donations for sweepstake entries support EAA's education programs. Check out the raffle rules on EAA's website. After the break, a New York City councilman wants to ban UAVs. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Aero TV or our website, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. A New York City councilman has introduced a bill in the council that would ban nearly all UAV flights in the city, possibly shutting commercial interests and hobbyists out altogether. The bill was introduced by Councilman Dan Gorodnik and appeared on the December 17th agenda. It was referred to committee by the council. It would, quote, amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to prohibiting the operation of unmanned aerial vehicles except by the police department with a warrant, end quote. The amendment did allow UAV operators by, quote, 
a person advocating such UAV pursuant to and within the limits of an express authorization by the Federal Aviation Administration, end quote. The proposed amendment does not lay out specific penalties for operating a UAV in the city. With around 2,000 Aero TV videos webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. This program is a very comprehensive program, uh, not only from the ground school standpoint, which covers the aeromedical aspects of why people can get false sensations or vertigo or illusions in that area, which is a very important part of prevention of an unusual attitude. In this video, you'll see that unusual attitude training is more than an introduction to a few odd attitudes in an aerobatic plane. Search It's All About Attitude on Aero TV's news channel. The U.S. Coast Guard helicopter station in Newport, Oregon will remain open following a hearing in a lawsuit brought by Newport Fishermen's Wives. A Coast Guard station in Charleston, South Carolina is also off the chopping block, at least for another year. The Coast Guard had sought to close both stations as a cost-saving measure, but the proposed move brought strong opposition from the maritime communities on both coasts as well as the Oregon and South Carolina legislative delegations. It's reported that lawmakers had inserted language in the omnibus budget legislation recently passed by Congress to block the Coast Guard's plans to close the two stations. The minutes from the hearings on the suit brought by the fishermen's wives indicated that the station will remain open through 2015 and operate as previously scheduled with an MH-65 helicopter out of the Newport Air Facility under the same conditions as it is currently operating. After these messages, an employee accuses a company of falsifying part labels. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. A former employee of AmeriKing in Huntington Beach, California, has filed a lawsuit against the aviation equipment manufacturer and distributor, saying he was fired for informing federal officials of the possible use of relabeled Chinese or remanufactured parts. According to his attorney, Huang Nguyen alleges that the company sold equipment such as ELTs, altitude encoders, and power converters that were made in China, and then relabeled to say they were U.S. made to distributors. It's reported the suit alleges that when Nguyen confronted his supervisor about the practice, he was told that because of the number of parts in an airplane, quote, no one will be able to say it definitively what made the airplane crash, end quote. Nguyen was terminated on January 8, 2014. He was told there was no work for him to do, but says in the complaint there had been no reduction in work at the company and that others had been hired to do similar jobs after he was let go. After traveling more than 3,600 miles above Earth and 600 miles by sea after recovery, NASA's Orion spacecraft completed the final leg of its journey by land last Thursday, arriving home at the agency's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The spacecraft's cross-country return, a 2,700-mile road trip from Naval Base San Diego to Kennedy, set the stage for in-depth analysis of data obtained during Orion's trip to space and will provide engineers detailed information on how the spacecraft fared during its two-orbit, four-and-a-half-hour flight test, completed on December 5th. Data was gathered in real time during the flight test, and more data was removed from the vehicle when it arrived on land in San Diego, before it was crated for the drive to Florida. 
An initial inspection of the crew module turned up nothing unexpected. The crew module will be refurbished for use in an ascent abort test in 2018. David Ames of Nawala, Oklahoma didn't know at the time, but he recently found out that a young Eagle flight he piloted last month turned out to be the 1.9 millionth EAA Young Eagle to participate in the program. During a Young Eagles rally in Oklahoma City, Ames flew Michael Knight, age 15, in his Piper Cherokee. Ames has flown nearly 900 Young Eagles since he first became a volunteer Young Eagles pilot in 1999. EAA's Young Eagles program began in 1992 with the goal of providing flights for a million young people, ages 18 to 17, by the 100th year anniversary of the Wright brothers' first powered flight. They met that goal and are still going strong. Along with Ames, thousands of Young Eagle pilots can take pride in introducing general aviation to 1.9 million youths. For David Ames, it was a great way to end the year. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. There will be no more Airborne episodes this week, but we'll be back with a new edition on Monday. Remember the debut of Airborne Unlimited, which will be five days a week, is now only a few days away. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas to all of our viewers and hope you have a safe and happy holiday season.